Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Uh, get ready. We're going to talk about definite integral as the signed area under a curve. So just to set this ball rolling, we're, we're going to look at a definite integral from its true limit definition. And if you're thinking, wait a second, true limit definition, what the heck is he talking about? Then you owe it to yourself to check out the bonus coverage for this week, talking about the true limit definition of a definite integral. It will blow your mind. It's awesome. Go look at it. You owe it to yourself. Go check it out. But if you don't, if you don't go anywhere and you stick around, it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna tell you that the limit definition involves sums and products, right? We already know definite integral is a product. We already know that Riemann sums help us to estimate the value of a definite integral. So it's not far-fetched to understand that definite integrals involve sums and products. Because they do, all those properties, right, that you learned foundationally with addition and multiplication, right, the commutative property and associative and distributive, like they are all still true. Those same properties that you learned way back when, they're not going anywhere. They're still true in calculus. And it's the, it's the foundations of why these following definite integral properties are true. So let's take a look at them, briefly explain them, and then we'll, in the next video, actually work through some of these uh, properties. And you can kind of see how they work out in a problem with a graph. So check out that one. So the first property is dealing with the associative property, right? If we are going to integrate uh, f plus g, if that's a function we want to integrate, then we can regroup instead of adding those two functions together, we can add them separately. We can regroup them to be the integral from a to b of f of x dx plus or minus the integral from a to b of g of x, right? So we can just split an integral apart. So the second property is dealing with the distributed property. The idea that if I have a constant multiplier inside my definite integral, I can factor that out. So K as a constant can be removed, not removed, but factored out of a definite integral free of charge. We don't have to do anything to it to pull it out of a definite integral. Likewise, we, can, we don't need to do anything to take a constant multiplier and put it inside of a definite integral if we need to. Okay, the next one uh, happens if we flip the limits around. So the integral from a to b of f of x dx is the same as negative integral from b to a. So notice when the limits flip, I flip the sign. And that has to do with the delta x definition from the limit definition of the definite integral as the top limit minus the bottom limit divided by n. And you can see that when you switch that order, that switches the sign. Next one is kind of like the pickup where you left off. You can take a to b, definite integral of f of x, and split it up at a value c. So you can say the integral from a to c plus the integral from c to b is the same thing as the integral from a to b. There's a couple pictures that I'd like to show you here. One of them makes sense, right? This critter makes sense because you're just going a to c and then you're going C to B, you can add yellow to blue and get the total integral A to B. Now, what doesn't make quite as much sense is what happens if C isn't in between A and B? It's still true. So that's this case. If C is not in between A and B, it doesn't feel like it makes sense, but it still works out. So if we look at this, you can see that the integral from a to b of f of x dx, the yellow part, plus the integral from b to c, that would be the green part, that would give me the entire integral a to c of f of x dx. And that part should make sense because it's almost exactly the same reasoning as before. So let's just do a little bit of algebra. Let's subtract the integral from b to c of f of x dx from both sides. 
Okay, not so bad. But that negative integral from B to C, we can flip the limit, flip the sign, so we get the property again. That's exactly the same property that we started with. It doesn't matter if C is in between A and B on one side or the other, it does not matter. As long as that value C is the same value, this property is true. Okay, that's a powerful property. We'll use that a lot. Here's the next one. And it's kind of like, duh, the integral from A to A of f of x dx, big fat zero. I think that's obvious, right? There is no space there under the curve. You're integrating nowhere, right? The width is zero. Here's another big one. Uh, the integral from A to B of a constant. We saw a constant before. We saw how we could factor it out. But this isn't an integral of a constant multiplier. This is just the integral of a flat constant. Um, you don't need any calculus for that. You just need to realize that as a picture, the picture of that scenario would be a flat function k. And then the integral from a to b, you can see it right above me. Right? It's just a rectangle whose area would be k, the height times the width, uh, which is b minus a. So that's the top limit B and the bottom limit A. So those six properties, we're going to use those as we talk about just a subtle change to how we think of a definite integral. Just a, another nuanced understanding of definite integral as the signed area under the curve. Okay, so we know that a definite integral is not just area. Therefore, doesn't always have to be positive, right? Definite integral is a, what, what's that? What's that you say? Yes, it's a product. And if definite integral is a product, then you better believe definite integrals can be negative and positive. And I'd like to tell you about when they can be positive and when they can be negative. So let's take a look at the cases here. We got, we got positive changes in X moving to the right across the number line. We've got negative changes in X moving backwards, <laughs> moving from right to left. Those are negative changes in X. Uh, and then the, the Y values can be positive or the Y values can be negative. And you're probably thinking good things right now that for a product to be negative, you got to have different signs. You got to have opposite signs. And for a product to be positive, they've got to be op they've got to be the same sign. Right, and you'd be exactly right there. So here is a case, or two cases, that would make the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx positive. Right, that is, if the function is above the x-axis and we're integrating to the right. That would be positive changes in x times positive y values. That would give me positive product. Likewise, if the function is underneath the x-axis, right, if the y values are negative, and I'm integrating backwards, right, I'm integrating from the right to the left, those would be negative changes in x, so negative changes in x times negative y values, that would also give me a positive product. All right, let me tell you when uh, the definite integral can be negative. So that's going to be when they're opposite. So the y values are positive, the changes in x are negative. So I'm integrating from right to left, a function that is positive. That's going to be a negative, def neg negative definite integral. And then uh, last case is a negative function integrating from left to right. So that's positive changes in x multiplied by negative function values. That's going to give me a negative definite integral. All right, I think that's all there is to this video. Uh, watch it again if you need to. Again. Go check out the bonus coverage. Uh, really, go do it. What are you doing? I mean, it's awesome. What are you, you're not going anywhere. You're at home. You just go watch those videos. You, you, you're going you're gonna to watch other YouTube junk. You're going you're gonna to watch stuff that, and just waste five hours of your life watching other YouTube videos. Go watch the bonus coverage. <laughs>